the <laughs> local radio station. When I was young, I used to have few ambitions apart from what I am. No, I never, never, I never wanted to become, never, never have an ambition uh, of becoming a, a teacher or lecturer. Nah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. In the beginning, I I wanted to work with National Geography. <laughs> you know, chasing the lion, chasing tigers, uh, and then thought that really glamorous. I thought that it's really nice to work with National Geography. And um, then after that, I developed a liking to sciences. Maybe we can talk about what you want to be when you were young. You know, okay. I mean, now you're still doing your degree, right? So uh, go on in the chat there. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, like, what was your first ambition? Uh, let's start the conversation with that, uh, despite the weather. All right. So when I when I was young, um, okay, at one point, I wanted to become a pilot. Ah, and then come the spec. So, of course, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you cannot become a pilot with, with, with this. Uh, back in those days, you can't enroll in a pilot, uh, you know, piloting school. Um, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to become a medical doctor. So I went all the way through high school in science stream, pure science stream, physics, biology, and all that. So it, I'm, until today, I still remember my physics and biology. I went to the point of cutting open rats. What else did I cut open? Uh, worms, frogs. I did, okay? I, I went to cut open, right? But then just before I switched to uh, join the university, then I, I, I enrolled in law school. So I ended up reading law, studying law. Then after that, reading, uh, reading law. Then after that, the corporate world, uh, working in the industry, the corporate world. And then uh, I think uh, reading would be always be part of life because my my parents they love to read. My father is a my father was a big newspaper man. You know, he would read newspaper on a daily basis, and my mother would read and write. Uh, she loves reading and you know, jotting down notes and. Uh, sharing sessions with people in the village, uh, wherever she can share her opinion, uh, join the puzzle competition in the newspaper, whatever, <laughs> she would join the competition and win some competition as well. So books is really a large part of uh, entertainment in, in back in those days. We don't have handphone, we don't have, you know, TV is really a luxury as well. So books, so literally... Uh, the moment I see books as a holiday package, you know, the moment I open one book, that's it, holiday into that book, go just go deep into the book and because of that reading. And so studying become, become, becomes easy when you love to read, studying um, and embracing new knowledge. So it's really like what, what comes, you know, the, oh, okay, okay, this is this. So did all the sciences, switched to law, right, in the corporate world after being itchy in the corporate world, like because I love reading, then went back to continue studying master. I thought I thought master degree would be my highest qualification. <laughs> uh, so did master and then I think I did very well in master and I got an offer to to uh, in fact I was supposed to go to uh, under the Singapore uh, Ministry of Manpower. They do have a scheme uh, for people who work in Singapore that is to spend six months in NUS and six months in, what was it, Shanghai, University of Shanghai, University of Beijing, I can't remember. So that required me to stay half a year in China back those days, right? Uh, and it was by the Ministry of Manpower Singapore. So uh, they really, they really nurture talent uh, back there uh, in, in that country. Yeah, so uh, what did I was supposed to pursue, that was to pursue law, international maritime law. Yeah, to pursue law. So great things. I I, I somehow uh, more interested into strategy, so I did not take up that one. So I did pursue strategy and then I did quite well in master. Then the next thing I know, I got an offer. As they call it fast track kind of thing, master and to do PhD. And here we are. So I am with you, right? But uh, okay, in between all those, I thought that I wanted to become when I okay when did I wanted to become a DJ? When I realized I couldn't become a pilot because of this, uh, so I thought like, okay, fine. Behind the scene, I get to talk I talk about a lot of things. Right? Yeah, hit Noratika, thank you. Hits epic. Maybe one of these days, you know, when I 
you know, when we reach that certain level, then we get invited into uh, talking on the radio and perhaps can have a segment of our own, who knows, you know, we'll see, we'll see, still establishing. Right. So I am uh, very sorry to hear some of our friends who are uh, affected by the flood. Um, here in Kuching, we are also supposed to have thunderstorm today. But uh, last night I was in the village. Uh, I was in the village about 100 plus kilometers from here, Kuching town. And that is uh, beyond Syrian border. That is in Simunjan. We drove for two hours last night to that place and stayed in the village. And I was told that, uh, well, okay, uh, okay, the village, uh, we have electricity in that village. But somehow, sometime middle of the night, it was, <laughs> oh my God, you know, let me share this with you. We blacked out. It was a blacked out. And uh, it, 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 it was uh, during that blacked out, somehow I, I sort of like realized it was pitch dark. At first, I thought it was something wrong with my eyes because I do have a struggle with dry eye and all that. It was really pitch dark, uh, pitch black dark. And I rubbed my eyes, like, have I gone blind? <laughs> have I gone blind? That must how blind people feel, though. Uh, you know, it was really at that, at, at that small few seconds, it just hit me. Wow. And, and I reflected like, wow, you know, this, this, this would be what blind people would see every day in a total pitch pitch black um then someone worked up and you know switched the headphone the torchlight on the phone. okay i'm not blind i'm not blind all right so i uh, went back to 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 sleep after that because it's quite cool in the mountain area and um and so uh I was told that it was rain uh, okay in english the sayings for heavy heavy rain would be anybody has an idea what do you call that? Very heavy, heavy rains. What saying would you use? Uh, anyone want to offer? What is the saying? What what would be? How would you describe? It rains. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Oh no, I'm not connected to this thing. I hear you in there, but I can't hear you in here. Goodness me. Hold on. Ah yeah, this is so unreliable. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, I know, that's why. Right. Um, ah, okay. This is one of the day when this is so annoying. Bluetooth. Now, now this is not Bluetooth, this is Bluetooth now. Now, where are you? You are connected. Please behave yourself. Be connected. Okay. So it says I am connected. Now, the system should be... Now, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah oh, no, okay. Okay, now I am I am officially your DJ. <laughs> Just now, fail. Ah, uh, dear. All right. Okay, good. Cool. Uh, now, where was I? I wasn't... I was on the mountain. Yeah, it was raining, and I... I woke up in the morning, and I was told that it was raining. Ah, okay. Somebody had attempted to say okay uh, i did hear just now raining cats and dogs okay yeah raining uh cats uh cats and dogs yeah in the olden days they said that when uh they have there was once uh that uh the, it, it was such a heavy rain that you know apart from the downpour of water from the sky cats and dogs start falling off from the sky so it was such a heavy rain and and, and, and therefore the saying of raining cats and dogs and i do modify that a bit when the rain is heavier than heavy i would say that raining uh uh cattle and uh, uh cats 
dogs and cattle and the entire ranch. Okay, when I say that to my friend, they know uh, it's really, really heavy rain, all right? When you catch dogs and cattle and the entire ranch, all right? Um, so, but we left this morning and it was really, uh, what we have was a very berkabus. Uh, okay, let me take a few more minutes rather than talking about classes today, a little bit of uh, things to inform to you. Give me a second. Now, what do I have? Hang on, yeah. Okay, what do I have? What do I have? Okay, I wish I could access my oh, my phone. I should be able to access my phone. I phone hold on. Uh, and, uh, okay. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute, guys. I'm going to do the book. Oh, I just sent you in the WhatsApp what I saw this morning. So this is the thing because it's very hard to find it here. Hold on, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is what SBSD. Okay, so that's the view that I saw this morning. I just came back this morning. I came back for, for the class. So I came back to town. I was on the mountain. So you saw that in the WhatsApp? Let me see. Let me say, send a few pictures there. Um, right, let me show you what I did. Okay, so uh, okay, what did I do? All right. Uh, so this is in Kuching, uh, driving out to not far from oh, where I stay. Okay, that one is further, but the one where I... Don't laugh, that was me doing my Tokyo drift on the river. All right, so I'm sharing that in WhatsApp easier though. Okay, what else did I do in the span of few few hours? A few things that I do. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yes, I would need the aircon. Yes, yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. How did you become a cow in the river? And finally, now, if you are interested 
is come to coaching. Okay, that's about that. Right? So, uh, so just a little bit of uh, uh, intro, nothing to do with strategy, but probably it can be uh, uh, doing a lot of strategy. So, um, yeah, do come to Kuching. Um, the place, uh, the place, uh, uh, our place is on what we call the Borneo Heights, Puncak Borneo here. And this is town. This is really, really, uh, for those who are familiar with Kuching, this is really almost center of the town. Uh, which is about um, uh, about three miles from the center of the town, uh, from the river, from the Parliament House. Uh, with Masato, the Madeka Plaza is really a walking within walking distance from uh, where I am now. Uh, but the land that you saw in that river, that would be uh, about uh, half an hour from the Kuching International Airport. So you have to climb a little bit to the Borneo Heights. They call it Puncak Borneo or Borneo Heights. So um, so I uh, own a piece of land over there. So that is gonna be maybe future homes, uh, right? So yeah, maybe build three house there, no need something big, just <laughs> basic. Uh, and the river uh, runs alongside the property about three acres so that, that's the river it's really mountain so the, you see the river is flowing uh, really really fast and i was swimming there and i was swimming uh against the current and you know what uh you see you saw me there swimming with my glasses on at one point my glasses got knocked off by strong current and fell into the river and you know what the first thing that came to my mind was and i will have to cancel the class because there's no way i'm going to prepare the lesson without my glasses my my the problem with my eyes like degree is so high so um, but somehow a survival instinct kicked in because i grew up by the riverside you know i knew uh i would have to really trace my movement back so again that, that is strategy so i looked at the river and i thought okay now the river will be very fast flow uh, the current will be very fast flow now how do you uh, negotiate with the strong current so i went deep low into the riverbed with lots of pebbles like really really literally like crawl up on the riverbed and now the chances of finding my glass again the art would be like the chances were so slim and i was thinking like okay this is going to be christmas uh the, the the shops are closing and 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 this thing, this glass, because of high index and etc., would require four to five days. I'm gonna be partially, well, uh, you know, really uh, incapacitated uh, because of that. So I was just like, okay, now, now, okay, now it's time to to become religious. And I said, God help me. So as I went up slowly, and but the entire family already gave up. So you, we told told you already. Who asked you to wear your glasses when you're swimming? So. Um, somehow I said, okay, right, you know, let me, let me satisfy my, at least I would go home uh, without saying to myself, why didn't even try? So I did, so try tracing it up. Okay. Uh, not really far from where the, 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 uh, the, 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 the glass got knocked off, uh, slightly to the right, I think it's like one meter to the right. And then I went that, I don't know why I went that way. And I, I felt. Uh, you know, like a twig of branch underneath the water. And I thought, okay, maybe twig of branch, you know, not anticipating anticipating much. But when I lift it up and like, lo and behold, that's my glasses. Can you imagine how it felt? <laughs> it felt good. So I think, uh, I was like, okay, so here I am with my glasses again. Um, and, and, and it really means a lot, okay? So there you go, a little adventure. And today we are going to hear from the group to finish your sharing on the slide that you have that is group seven so um enough of my story yeah? group seven would be uh one naziha one naziha and gang then group eight would be fuzzly and the gang group nine would be aina and the gang group 10 we have amat nafal and the gang group 11 do we even have a group 11 yeah patricia and team so that would be five 
uh, in uh, five groups will be presenting. So try your very best to keep to a bare minimum of 10 minutes then so that we can talk about the final, uh, the midterm exam and then the final year, uh, your, your final exam. And then uh, I will discuss with you how are we going to complete the next chapter, which basically would be um, uh, strategy implementation, that is how people draft action plan after they do strategy. And then you have strategy monitoring and feedback, and that is, you know, how do you chase people, you know, to, to deliver the strategy, how you uh, decide uh, when to change the strategy if something goes wrong. So basically, those are the two last chapter. I mean, it looks a lot in a textbook, and it just looks a lot in the slide, but actually in mm -hmm. real life, all of these things actually are happening almost like simultaneously. And and let, let me share with you, do not be, be afraid with strategic management because, you know, finally, it boils down to logic, all right? If you are running out of idea, like, okay, if you if you think that you have no idea how to, now what is this? You know, then, then you just search deep into your consciousness, like, okay, if I don't have anybody to help me and I'm the only one supposed to solve this, what would be the next logical step that I will take? You will be fine if you manage to go deep and you know go go down to that level. All right. So and then, okay, desperation can be the mother of all invention, the mother of all creativity. So uh, always try to uh, accept, of course, if you have your advisors around you. But then again, I remember uh, Prince William. Prince William. All right, now let me share with you the difference between, I think the queen is going to be angry with me, but let me talk. The difference between Prince William and Prince Charles. Now, Prince Charles will be surrounded, Prince Charles is the one person that surrounded by so many advisors, people would fall at his feet to do things for him. Now, Prince Charles, and, and these people, the advisors, uh, the man in grey, the man in black, usually they call it the man in grey. Uh, I remember uh, Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, uh, referred to them as men in grey, probably because they were grey, you know, whether they are wearing grey suit or the hair were greying. Uh, that goes to show seniority in the palace. Now, the man in grey would uh, make decision for him, okay? Even though they are labeled as advisor, but they would make decision for him. That's, for, that's why uh, Prince Charles is such a sorry uh, figure. I think it, it did good for him towards the end when finally he decided to remarry and finally he he, he married um, uh, the Duchess of Cornwall, his current wife. Uh, but Prince William, when he was interviewed, um, people wanted to know now how this one would make decision com compared to Charles, you know, because people thought that Prince Charles really uh, are not really doing a good job after what happened to Princess Diana. Um, the fact that Princess Diana uh, didn't get, you know, a quote, quote unquote, didn't get proper help, didn't get proper attention, was poorly misunderstood by the palace, was literally left to fend for herself, right? Uh, so now how would her son have come along? So he was asked, um, and he said this, I, I would listen to as many advice as I can. I would listen. I will take it in. But finally, I would make my own judgment. So you do that as well. Even though you are surrounded by advices in future, all right, you might get all sorts of advices from A to Z, but ultimately you will be the one that calling the shots, all right, especially if you run the company and the company is yours, right? you would be totally, finally unsuitable. So I think a statement by a young Prince, uh, Prince William was very good. Um, uh, stand from a young man when he said like that. So there you go. Okay. So um, over to you now, Group Seven, Wana Ziha and Team. Would you um do your uh, proceed with your presentation? We'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Good afternoon to Dr. Helen and friends. We are from Group 7, and today we are going to present about the quantitative strategy, planning metrics, QSPM. Next, I will pass to Amira Nabiha for the definitions. My name is Amira Nabiha. I will present the definition. The quantitative strategic management, uh, 
strategic planning matrix or a QSPM approach attempts to objectively select the best strategy using input from other management techniques and some easy computations. Provides an analytical method for comparing feasible alternative actions. In other words, the QSPM method uses inputs from stage one analysis, analysis, analysis matches uh, them with results from stage to analyze and then decides objectively among alternative strategies. Next, uh, advantages. Uh, QSPM provides a framework to prioritize the strategies. It can be used for comparing strategies at any level such as corporate, business and functional. The other positive feature of QSPM is that it integrates external and internal factors into the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. QSPM can be developed for small and large-scale profit and non-profit organizations. Next is uh, limitations. A limitation of the QSPM is that it can be only as good as the compulsory information matching analyze upon uh, upon which it is based and other another limitation is that it requires good judgment in assigning attractiveness attractiveness scores also the total attractiveness scores can be close such a, uh, such that a final decision is not clear like all analytical tools however the QSPM should not detect uh, decisions but rather should be developed as input into the owner's final decision. Next, I will pass to Anna Raihan. Hi, I'm Raihana. So there are six steps to create a quantitative strategic planning matrix or QSPM. Number one, make a list of the firm's key external factors such as opportunities and threats and internal factors such as strengths and weaknesses. This information should be taken directly from the EFE matrix and IFE matrix. Number two, assign weight to each key external and internal factor. Number three, examine the stage two matching matrix uh, such as um, SWOT matrix, space matrix and identify alternative strategies that the, that the organization should consider implementing. Next. Uh, number four, determine the, uh, the attractiveness scores defined as numerical values that indicate the relative attractive, attractiveness of each strategy in a given set of alternatives. The range for attractiveness score is one, not attractive, two, somewhat attractive, three, reasonably attractive, and four, highly attractive. Number five, compute the total attractiveness score. Total attractiveness score are defined as the product of multiplying the weight uh, from step two by the attractiveness score by, uh, from step four in each row. And lastly, compute the sum total attractiveness score by add total attractiveness score in each strategy column of the QSPM. Next, I will pass to um, Naziha. Okay, this is the example of QSPM of McDonald's. For step one, is divided into two. It is key external and internal factors. Key internal factors contain strength and weakness, and key external factors contain opportunities and threats. Step two is weak. The weak must be assigned and the total must be not more than 1.0. Step three for option one and two is the alternative strategies of organizations. Step four, attractiveness course AS that must be ranged between one to four. Step five, to get total attractiveness course TAS is weak multiplied by AS. Step six, sum total attractiveness score is add all total of TAS in each strategic columns. So that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very technical, but very clear. Um, so how do you find it? Is it easy to use? Tim? 
you can uh, you can unmute yourself. Let's have the conversation. Do you find it's easy to use? Is okay. Let me let me ask another question. Do you find it's easy to understand when you prepare this? Uh, not fully understand, but uh, we make more research on it. Uh, like we watch the YouTube and there's other alternatives. Oh, sampai YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the explanation on the Google are not clear sometimes because uh, uh, not more explanation on the QSPM. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, and the rest, um, do you have any question on QSPM? Are you even clear how to use QSPM now? This is the time to ask them if you have any question. If you know how to use QSPM, PM well, you know, it, it's very good uh, when you are in the industry. You can tell everybody is like, hey, okay, what should we do? do we, should we do this or this? Ah, okay, you say that. Let's now, okay, let's take a look at QSPM. Now, if you have any question, this is the time to ask the team and I am here to assist if you have any question. Uh, don't sit down there and quiet, not knowing because you will be on the losing side if you're not asking. For all who are quiet, I assume you understand, yeah? Okay, if this comes out in the final examination. Ah. <laughs> All okay? Wow, that means this class is very good. Huh? Okay, if you have no question for this team, AS and TAS. Okay, Tim, would you explain AS and TAS to human? Mudah je tu. Tolong explain AS and TAS. Ah, you all can unmute actually and have a conversation. It's really okay. Don't be afraid to speak up. Tim, um, please answer you, man. Thank you. That's not... Are, are you guys lagging or what? Yeah, but just off the cuff, explain uh, AS and TAS. I think you should know that right now, right? Okay. Okay, okay. Good day, good day. Um, am I totally missing you guys explaining or what? I also cannot hear anything. Yeah. Uh, is somebody explaining something? Because you want to say, okay, okay. What does it mean, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you mind, are they explaining to you? Uh, uh, behind our back? <laughs> uh, I can't got, got understand I got, I got understand. Eh, hey, mana team ni cakap lah. This is presentation. I'm giving marks on you speaking up. That's why I'm asking you. If you're not speaking up, I'm not going to give you good marks on Q&A. <laughs> you have to speak up. Tim, hang, hang semua kena bersuara. Um, okay, for the range of the Tiffany's course is based on the slide that we show. Uh, uh, based on the strategy that the McDonnell uh, give where one is for not attractive based on the situations and the strategy that uh, for the current situations. What is TAS? Total attractive score. Hmm. Okay. So I think there is one lesson learned here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when you are being asked to present, uh, it is not important actually the slide and how you present. It is 
the understanding of the fundamental principle behind what you're talking about. So please, lesson learn. Make sure you understand what you present, okay? Because, you know, it will serve you good in the future, right? So don't try not to present for the sake of presenting because we don't need, uh, uh, we don't need that. What we need is you have a full command of your subject. Right, now would you like to try to explain what is TAS and how does it come about? Uh, daughter, may I try? Yeah, yes, yes, it's yours, it's yours, okay. it's your group. Uh, total, uh, for total attractiveness score, we, we will get from um, AS uh, weight times by AS, and then we, we will get total attractiveness score. Mm -hmm. Okay, if let's let's go back to the uh, your matrix. Okay, go back to your matrix. Uh, uh, your McDonald matrix just now. Yeah. All right. So um, again, I will now I will take over from your team explaining so that everybody uh, understand this uh, again. This is really technical, the technicalities of it. Uh, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, listen well. This is where you own the subject in the technicalities. Especially out there, when you are looking for a job, you are going to compete with engineering students. You are going to compete with architecture students, with medical students, who sometimes, uh, you know, after graduating, because... How often do you find you talk to somebody who are a manager and you would ask them what were your first degree? How often do you find that they are not management students actually? Very often. Most of them, you know, Satya Nadella, Microsoft, is an engineer. Elon Musk, physicist. Remember that. People from different streams. So now if you... You have this, this, at least these technicalities you must conquer because you know what? At least you can beat them in these technicalities. Are you all with me or not? Can I hear a yes from all of you? A voice. Yes. Do you yes, understand? Yes. Right? Yes, daughter. Don't get beaten up by them when you apply for a job because if you are just generally, you only know the general and the surface presenting and etc. It's going to be very difficult. So, I mean, not only for this team, uh, please, uh, jangan, jangan be atitau, not only you. I mean, now this is a message to all of you because you are not the first. Uh, uh, my previous uh, strategic management student also, I will tell him like this, you know, uh, including start from how you draft the vision and mission, uh, the IFE and EFE. So this is where you tell them, move aside, let me show you how it's done. All right, and then the engineering student who maybe the you know in the engineering post will look at you like, okay, what have you got up your sleeve? This is what you have. So, you know, they are very impressed with numbers, you know. So if you don't talk numbers to them, if you just talk theory to them, they will just say, ah, this is just theory. I mean, it doesn't make sense to us number people. So, okay, fine, you want numbers? Give them this. All right, now let's just do that. But how do you do QSPM? QSPM actually is for you to use, uh, you use it for prioritization when you want to decide. Because at the end of the day, strategy is to select the best, uh, the best decision, the best place to go, the best place to makan, you know, all that, right? So, so then you, you need to have some sort of like numbers to tell you, okay, this one is better than that one. So QSPM is one, that's what we call it, quantitative, right, uh, method. So what you do is now, now how do you make decision? So you make decision, again, you make decision based on factors. So that is why they are using IFE and EFE. IFE and EFE are the deciding factors here. The internal factor, the external factor. Where does it come from? Do you remember? Internal factor, external factor from your chapter 6 and chapter 7. All right. So after this, go back and read well your chapter 6 and chapter 7. It is very clear in David's. I can't do it any better than David. Even if you don't have that David textbook, if I were to teach you, I will teach it like him as well. Uh, because that is, I mean, like uh, uh, when I do it with the industry, I do it the same thing. Can't get any different than that, right? So then you look at all the internal factors, the external factor. Now, let me tell you, in the internal factor and external factor, you might have so many factors, right? You look at the, uh, the decision that you have to make 
And then when you look at the factors, you only select the most relevant factors, factors relevant to the decision you want to make. Maybe you have you, you, you have 10 internal factor. Okay, maybe only five relevant to this one. Fine. Then you only uh, provide the weightage um, and the attractiveness score on the five factors out of the 10 available there uh, to make your decision. The same thing also with external factor, the EFE. Now, uh, in certain instances, you might don't have to do your weightage because that weightage can come from the IFE and EFE. All right. The only thing that you uh, perform now is the ranking, the rating, right? The rating, because now the rating is attractiveness score, not the same rating with the one that we do, the IFE and EFE. IFE and EFE, what kind of rating do we do? How well does your organization respond to this factor? How well do they manage this factor? So that is the rating one to four. Here is how attractive is this strategy based on this factor? So that is the AS. So the attractiveness score, one, two, three, four. All right, so that is the standard that you, they use. Can you go one, two, three, four, five? Well, if you want to, but you know, so what's the difference between one, two, four? Might as well just stick to one, two, four. Lah. All right, so you do conduct the attractiveness score for your based on the internal factor and then based on the external factor. You see, it's really interesting because the factor would be the same, the decision would be different. So you have to be mindful of what you have and what you don't have because the factor will actually tell you are you ready or not? Are you capable or not? All right. Uh, so that is the uh, QSPM. And then when you do the scoring and then the total computation will give you the total attractiveness score. So that is the TAS. And then you look, you compare of the TAS between the two or the, uh, the few things that we have there. But usually we just compare two, all right? Two. And naturally, you would go for the one with higher TAS. Why? Because it is more attractive and therefore the AS. Is that clear for everyone? Are you good with that, the explanation? Mm, make sure this is your turf. Do not let it fall into the hands of the engineers or otherwise you have nothing to beat them with. All right, so please, my young people, all that you see, the technical things that we have learned, uh, all the tables and all that, make sure you get a good grasp of it. Okay, don't let it go. Okay. So, Tim, thank you very much. Um, so, um, and I would like to say thank you for your effort of doing that on McDonald. Okay, well done. Keep it up. And um, now you are comparing this. Okay, let's say if you're comparing this uh, decision on McDonald, right? Mm. Okay. Uh, so, right. doctor, yeah. uh, for example, the first one is new product and services and the attractiveness is four. Is it mm. means that it's very attractive because it can, it can generate more profits or it can create like competitive advantage? Is it based on that? Ah, depends on what you want, actually. Oh. So, um, yeah. De uh, okay, okay. Good question, Hazel. It will help for you to also at all times to look at your vision and mission. Okay, mission and vision. Because mm -hmm. usually you do this work when you are formulating new strategy for the next, like for the next three years, you know, you have this, uh, you have, uh, ooh, what's the word? You have the uh, five-year plan, three-year plan, you have new rollouts. So most likely you would have probably a new mission and vision. If you don't have a new mission and vision, sometimes the mission and vision is maintained. And then you might want to look at your corporate strategy because it depends. If this is the functional strategy, so the next thing for you to refer to, to check whether uh, okay or not okay, apart from the factors, would be the corporate strategy, all right? So if you are comparing corporate strategy, apart from the mission and vision, you might want to look also at the financial report, all right? And then you might want to look also uh, to look also uh, for the, the chairman or the CEO statement. What does the CEO want? Where he wants to go? Usually, when you are strategizing, the top management, the CEO would first, uh, you know, tell you their expectation. Okay? Is that okay, Hazel? Mm, yeah. So it's yeah, based yeah. on the directions. Yes. Based okay. on the direction 
and the expectation of the top management, okay, the organization. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Good. Welcome. All right. Okay, so thank you, team. Um, we move on to the next team. Well done on that one. Our next team would be uh, Fuzzly and the gang. Mm, there. This is interesting. I think just yes, nice. Uh, the question from you just now, Hazel. So the role of the organization is strategic analysis and choice. All right. Silakan. Uh, Assalamualaikum and great team. Report group A. So this is my group. It is consist of myself, uh, Arfan, and my friend, Akma Azri, Fazli Idris, and Liu Man. Uh, we would like to present about organizational culture and then role of the organization in strategic analysis and choice based on John Parking context. And actually, John Parking uh, is the which is, is the company that we choose to uh, do as our group project for strategic management. And lastly is, uh, what is culture is strategy for breakfast? Uh, that's all for me and I will pass to my other member to continue our presentation today. Thank you, Fazli. Thank you, Fazli. Okay, thank you, Arfan. Okay, uh, my name is Akmal Azri. So I will explain about what is organizational culture. So uh, organizational, organizational culture is a set of shared values, beliefs, attitudes, uh, customs, norms, rights, etc., etc. that describe a firm. Uh, so uh, it defines a proper way to behave within the organization. It can become the driver or catalyst that boosts commitment and productivity in organization when strategy changes are made. Uh, so communications are made within the organization so that it can adapt with strategy analysis and choices. So, does an organization have more than one culture? The answer is, it depends. Uh, for an example, in same organization, uh, marketing and manufacturing departments often have different cultures, such as uh, the marketing department uh, may focus more on innovativeness. Uh, I mean, trying out new ideas. Uh, meanwhile, manufacturing department may focus more on being uh, precise in details upon processing product. So I will pass the next slide to my other member. Um, so I will discuss about how organizational culture will affect the strategy analysis and decision making. The Jump Parking, the organization culture of Jump Parking is innovation oriented and market oriented. Um, and when they make decision and strategic strategy analysis, they're able to visualize market opportunity from customers' problem into uh, into the so solution. The customer problem they, they identify is drivers that struggle to find parking during vacation, shopping, working and meeting. And the solution is software solution, which is the application of jump parking that help. They will trace the parking lots and will bring will will guide them to the parking with easier approach. However, jump parking sometimes face complaint about system down. So they need to ensure that they increase their people culture oriented and also learning culture to enhance their system and functionality of the better efficacy of apps. That's all from me. Now I pass the time to, to Fazli. 
Uh, hello, uh, my name is Mohd Fazli and today I will share about culture is strategy for breakfast. Mm. So, this quote is, uh, you know, uh, this quote is from Peter Ducker. Uh, he is a management guru. So, what what does he mean by culture is strategy for breakfast is uh, no matter what business strategy or strategic plan that we try to implant with the team, the effectiveness and efficiency of the plan will be hampered if the culture does not support it. Uh, for example, if we have uh, a team that is good in performing tasks but he have a culture that uh, he will do the work alone I'm sure that we cannot achieve the uh, organizational strategy, which is for to increase the work team and so on. And the simple question to represent this code is, how can we achieve performance when we are not there? And what I mean is the culture. And we also must remember that good culture will lead to the right strategy. Uh, that's all. Uh, any any question? Your presentation is brief, but actually the content, the meaning is so important and powerful for organization. And this is usually what makes organization fail. After all the IFEF, EF, I all you know do that. But when it comes to this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Anamuka Fazli. Fazli, please show yourself. Uh, other request from Peminat over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, <laughs> Bas, are you satisfied? How much should I give marks to the full marks huh, after Fazli showing his face? <laughs> All right. Uh, any question on culture, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, try to, uh, uh, okay, while you are preparing a question that you want to ask or you can type, uh, culture can be a cost. What I mean by cost is that it can be costly, uh, especially if, uh, you know, uh, you have a toxic culture not being able to be taken care of. And um, I spoke about this a few years ago when I was with uh, one group. Uh, in fact, I prepared my slide, and one of my piece of slide is uh, culture eat strategy for breakfast because that was being uh, used by the Hilton Hotel when the boss of Hilton, the new boss of Hilton, took over, and he tried to revive Hilton. You know, Hilton was almost out. When he tried to revive Hilton, um, the first thing that he tackled was culture, and he... Uh, he he told the entire organization, right? You know, gotta be very careful because culture it's strategy for breakfast. Yeah, uh, very true. Human uh, can be an asset or can be a cost. All right. So um, now, um, when uh, so so uh, do you have to invest in culture? Yes, you have to invest in culture. That's why people have like campaign, team building, and whatnot. So that is what I meant by cost just now. Human eh? culture is a cost. All right, first, all right, but then if you nurture the right culture and then it grow beautifully and it grow upon, you know, like stacking and stacking upon and then the cost become, you know, then you you will reach the uh, the diminishing return. Uh, what I mean, like no, no, no matter how much you add to it, you, know, you would reach that level of saturation maybe. Uh, you, you, if culture is now become so embedded in the organizational's way of life and then the cost would be low and then it become an asset, slowly it become an asset, right? Um, right. Um, coming back to Hilton. So uh, one of the things that the, uh, was Chris Panetta, that's his name. One of the things that, the first thing that he did was he changed the headquarter of uh, Hilton. You can read on that, how he uh, turned Hilton around. And also, and he, um, so it's, it's, it's important also to understand the business. And Hilton is like providing accommodation, right? People away from home. So the one thing that he really uh, pinned down on that, um, 
th that's why they have uh, they have uh, if remember this if you check in into Hilton after you finish checking in the first thing that they give you is like a cookies cookie the Hilton cookies famous Hilton cookie you came up with that idea you know baking or like went to the kitchen okay let's bake warm cookies so and then the, the second thing that you notice about the cookies will be it's warm it's like from the oven why the staff usually would heat it up first before they pass you the cookies so um, the reason behind that is they want you to feel welcome and feel at home. You're welcome with, you know, like warm cookies and make your stay comfortable. Um, I experienced that. And thank God, actually, when I spoke about this culture eat breakfast, the group was staying in Hilton Malacca, uh, Hotel Hilton Malacca. So I quickly remind all of them, you know, please remember what happened after you checked in. Some remember, some don't, you know, they just... Look at after my explanation that evening, then they really appreciate the cookies. Yeah, that cookie's right. Everybody went back to the cookie and finished it up, most of them. Um, and then during dinner, there were a few young uh, people like yourself actually tending to the banquet, tending to the even buffet that we had in hotel in Hilton Laka. And I was standing in front of uh, uh, a row of yogurt so it's like when you have too many options in front of you you are spoiled for choices we, you can't you know I, I don't know about you guys you know unless you are steve job or um, mark zuckerberg uh, you only have one gray shirt you know all gray shirt and all jeans then you don't have to decide what to wear what to pair with in the morning right before before you go somewhere else now all right so uh, so when you're spoiled with choices, you just like stood there paralyzed, not being able to make decision on the simplest of things to decide on what yogurt to eat for dinner, right? So I stood there paralyzed, like, now what yogurt? Because if you take one of these, because you can't take five, right? You would buy, okay, it's okay to you to grab five yogurt during uh, at, at the buffet, but you would look so like, what's wrong with this person, right? You wouldn't want people to look at you and giving you, what's wrong with that look? I had never eating yogurt before so I stood there and the young lady was like okay you know um uh, what do you feel like for dinner uh, today do, are you going for seafood or are you going for midsection and I looked at her okay so I feel like going for I probably would you know skew it to, towards more meat because I had seafood yesterday I said okay now if you have uh, meat okay if you want to have a starter before you have meat so I would like to recommend that I was like looking at her and I forgot the entire word that she was saying because I said, well, this is amazing. Somebody is advising me that really uh, detail and on what to take uh, yogurt. And her explanation was like, yeah, I believe you. It's like so convincing. I said, I go with your recommendation. And I was so impressed with that. And I asked her, finally, I asked her, I mean, I, I prepared a slide on Hilton, right? And I'm like, did you receive any training for this? I said, yes. We would train the hotel, make it a point that we talk to visitors and that we make them feel like they are not so overwhelmed with like arrays of things, like myriad of foods right in front of them. We will help them so that they feel, you know, because it is really not at home. I mean, how many of you, when you have dinner at home, you have the entire table full with food? How many? Not, not many, right? Only maybe during Chinese New Year. Also, also Chinese New Year. Also, hari, okay, Hari Raya lah. We have so many things on the table. Pun tak juga rendang, pulut. That's it. One or two things, right? So, so it's really quite abnormal for you to be surrounded by food. So, how can that be home? So, but then come along one person and make, help you to make decision. Uh, attractiveness score. So this person is trying to help us to, you know, fill up the total attractiveness score. So finally, she provide me the total attractiveness score, the highest one. I go with this yogurt. So I had that. So I remember that until to this very day. So I hope that also is a lesson that we can uh, learn from that little experience that I have. Well, um, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, the rest of you, any question you would like to ask um, this team? Tim, I would like to ask you, what, what do you think? Do you think the founders' values or even culture would uh, influence the culture of the organization? And why do you think that? I, I repeat, do you think the values or the uh, culture of the founder, let's say the founder of the company, would influence the culture of the organization? And, and why is that? I, 
I think the their team is small, only only seven employees. So they emphasize on happy work, happy and spiritual workplace first, rather than fixing a culture, because their team are not big enough to form a to form a solid culture. So they focus on working atmosphere first before they take the before they take new employee. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Maybe I ask. Maybe I ask the question on a broader broader scale. All right. Human and team. What do you think? Do you think? Um. For example, do you they think the have, value? They don't, they don't have the documentation or any codes of our culture. Ah. Uh, no. Yeah. Because they're new. They're startups. Right. All right. Yeah. Now. Okay. My my question is this. Um. Do you think, for example, like the values, could the values and the culture of people like Steve Jobs? Uh, influence the companies like Apple or the values and culture of people like Elon Musk on the value and the culture of company like Tesla? What do you think? That is my question. Uh, I think it is a yes because uh, you know when the leader is good and have a good value, it will influence the all the workers. Like for example, if the if the boss is very disciplined, so automatically all the workers will follow the schedule and so on. Hmm. So okay. far I concern about how they cross how's the cross-functional really function under a good culture. Okay. Okay. So please think about this question. It might be like one of your midterm or your final. Okay. Some clues of that. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Tim. So we have heard on organizational culture and how it affects decision making. Um, now we would like to invite the next group, Wan Naziha and the gang. Thank you, Rector. Oh, sorry, not one as you pull up. Patah balik one as you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Aina Ildina. Sorry, sorry. Group nine. Yeah, because culture is very important. So two groups were assigned to do this, right? We would like to hear another perspective now uh, on uh, culture. Okay, can we start now? Sure, Sila Shiki. Go ahead. Uh, Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are from Group Nine. Today we're going to present about cultural aspects of strategy analysis and choice. My name is Nora Shiki Indiana. And I will talk about the definition of organizational culture. Organizational culture is the set of shared values, beliefs, mm -hmm. attitudes, practices, norms, rights, rituals, personalities, heroes, and heroines that characters of a company is known as organizational culture. The way of an organizational culture, this business is defined by its culture. So usually, organizational culture is led by the leaders. They can create and also also influence by their employers on mm. many different workplace cultures. They are business leaders are vital to the creation and communication of their workplace culture. Leaders they must appreciate their role in maintaining or evolving an organization's culture. A deeply embedded and established culture illustrates how people should behave, which can help their employees to achieve their goals. So this behavioral framework in turn ensures higher job satisfaction when an employee feels better and because the leader is helping them to complete their goals. Um, so from this perspective, organizational culture, leadership, and job satisfaction are all linked. So, for example, culture, organizational culture consists of many, many culture. For example, culture of appreciation, uh, such as promotion, awards, recognition, 
And then innovative, everyone think creatively about everything they do, including their own cultural initiatives. And then the culture of teamwork, which includes team members' participation, communication, and mutual respect. That is all for me. I will pass to Anissa. Uh, Anissa, we cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, uh, how it works is um, cultural aspect uh, help an organization coordinate the human being to inspire commitment and productivity in an organization where some some strategic change are made. Um, so this is because um, when the new strategies is made, managers uh, and employees may sabotage or dis disagree with uh, the new strategy uh, as effort to recapture the status quo. So uh, by doing the cultural aspect, uh, the organization may able to control how to interact and work together to achieve high levels of organizational effectiveness. So um, next is um, how determining the organization cultural aspect uh, by doing the, by discover from the vision, mission and uh, values of the organization. So here is uh, some example of Tesla organizational culture. Uh, as we know that um, Tesla is an automotive industry. So the mm -hmm. culture empowers its workforce to search for ideal solutions that make the business stand out in the automotive industry and the energy generation storage industry. So there is six of Tesla's organization, organizational culture, which are move fast, do the impossible, constantly innovate, um, first principles, and think like owners, and we are all in. So by uh, Tesla's culture is like doing some innovative uh, problem solving. So that helps the company to keep the competitiveness of the electric car business. Also encourage the company's employees to generate new ideas and solutions to the target market. So next, I will pass to my friends, Aina Idina. Thank you, Anissa. And I am going to talk about the benefits of organizational culture. In my opinion, I think the key to a successful organization is to have a culture based on a strongly held and widely shared set of beliefs that are supported by strategy and culture. It is for employee, employees to know how top management wants them to respond to any situation, employees believe that the expected response is the proper one. And I think employees know that they will be rewarded for demonstrating the organization's values. And one of the benefits of organizational culture is that uh, it can increase employee engagement, a work environment that possesses organizational culture is driven by purpose and clear expectations. And this will motivate them to be more engaged in their work duties and interactions with others. Organizational culture also can lead to high levels of workforce engagement that drives productivity, having a strong connection to an organization and its people creates an atmosphere of positivity that is hard to ignore. For example, um, in Malaysia, there is a company called AirAsia. It calls their employees all stars as they value them, they value them as stars. 
And I think that will drive their productivity as an employee. That's all from me and I will pass it to Malini. Uh, hello everyone. So another benefit of organizational culture is it affects employees performance. So if the organization, organizational culture has direct impact on employees performance and their well-being. Cultures which are supportive to employees such as flexible working options and supportive management behavior to encourage employees to perform well compared to companies that have unhealthy culture such as uh, being biased and rigid culture, which could result in the loss of some valuable employees. Uh, <clears throat> if if uh, the employees are being set off, I, I mean, they are not working, so it will be difficult in implementing the strategy of the organization, and it will affect the overall performance of the organization also. Thank you. Thank you very much, team. Um, any question you would like to ask uh, the team? They are preparing one set also discussing on the culture. So if I ask you offhand without looking at the notes, if I ask you to define culture, would you be able to do that in one breath? Now take a deep breath. Like, culture is... Da -da 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 -da. Could you do that? Without looking at the notes. Because I can tell you, most times, the bosses at the organization couldn't define culture properly. And uh, most uh, time, the people in the organization would think culture is uh, budaya, the dancing, the, you know, the dance, the music, traditional music. That's what they thought, the culture. We don't have traditional music, and therefore we don't have culture. And sometimes people, I have come across that many, many times. So now, now you, you are a strategic management scholar by now. If you said that, no, um, uh, okay, let me try to explain. So if you are being asked now, culture is try to challenge yourself to be able to define. Culture is, okay, culture is what? Now the key word in culture is, you don't forget the key word. What is the key word in culture? Everybody, can you try? Anybody want to try that? Don't fail that. There is one I call that the Achilles heel. If you fail to mention that when you try to define culture or you tell culture to somebody else, you are not talking about culture. You're talking about something else. What is that one killing word or one Achilles heel, we call it? I think characteristics rise of a company. Nope. Go, uh, go on, the, keep going on. One word. Uh, the ideas and... Human behavior. One word. Nope. One mm. word. All I need. Nope. I, I, I just need one word. Beliefs. Nope. Norm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Keep going, people. Unbelievable. Wrong. Ah. <laughs> nope. Right. Nope. Value. 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 Strategy. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Belief. See, tough is it? Okay, even my strategy management class is struggling. Can you imagine those from the engineering grade? No, 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 no. Art. <laughs> no, go on. No, no, no. Many Spiritual knowledge. No, no, no. No, oh. ah, what is that? Belief. Uh, society. Uh, <laughs> okay, because you cannot say culture is society. Culture is no, right? You cannot. There's something is missing there. History. Nope. Keep trying. Don't give Belief. up. Beliefs. Oh, yeah, culture is belief, but something is missing there. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, ah, now you know, right? So you strategy. see. Nope. Uh, Keep going. Uh, so you see belief. strategic philosophy. Nope. nope. That's why you see strategic management is very powerful. You get a hold of it. Nope. Culture is training. Nope. Characteristics? Nope. Nice try, fun, but nope. 
Ah, Action. now you know. Tradition. Symbol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, culture. Culture is the tradition. Yeah, but what is that? Um, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, what is the one word? Nana no. is one word. Yeah, no, but no. <laughs> one word. Huh? This is where. This is where when I when I tell them that everybody was like, oh, okay, and then and then they would know the moment you say this, then they know whether they have culture or not. They might they may have morals, they may have norms, they may have the people, but doesn't mean they have the culture. Commitment. Tradition. They may have commitment. They may have tradition, but it might not be a culture. Maybe. Nope. I'm drinking water. I'm going to the kitchen. See whether you can <laughs> figure it out. I give I give you time. <laughs> Type it in there. Uh, Let me see. Christmas is around the corner. New Year's around the corner. Whoever gets this right will get a good Christmas and old New Year present from me. Wow. <laughs> Ideology. Heritage. Uh, this is the word of what? I'm back, still no answer. Experience. Heritage and ideology, I heard just now, no. Uh, system. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Shall we play hangman gang? They go, we all gonna gantung or not? <laughs> Hang or not? <laughs> Development? No. Oh my goodness. Okay, show me your slide again. <laughs> it's there on your slide you see okay okay looks like there's no winner uh, this is where <laughs> oh, first slide thank Nisa. you first slide go back to the first slide to the different first slide now everyone pay attention look at the definition what is the defining word there Personalities. Culture. Nope. Attitude. The set of what before the rest of the thing? Share. Value. Share. 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 S-H-A-R-E-D. Share. 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 <laughs> if only one person has the value, but the other nine doesn't have it, or five person has the value, or the other five doesn't believe it, they don't share it. That means they don't have the culture. Period. Full stop. You got me. If three person, you know, have the held hold the beliefs there, and the other seven not, you don't have the culture. You have the beliefs, yes, yeah. but you don't have the culture because the key, the killing thing here is shared. That's why it is the cost. That's why companies spend money so that people share the values. For example, if you have like, you know, you, you selected three words as the value. What is that? Uh, uh, for example, you said innovation, uh, apa lagi? Uh, you know, like friendly, uh, customer friendly, uh, and, and another word, apa tu, you man, tu, you man, a boy. All right. So you see, the organization will print flyers and print posters, lekat kat dinding, put in everywhere. Okay, why? So that people then start, okay, these three things, three things, 
Okay, what is this? What 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 is the value of this organization? One, two, three. Ah, uh, masa nak naik pangkat when you are interview for promotion, you have to quote these three things, why? Right? And then everybody said it cannot be suddenly four values if the company already declared three. Are you with me, all of you? Yes. All right. Yeah. So the entire organization now have to say, okay, there are three values. Okay, what are they? The same three values. It cannot be different thing. The more you have a different values. And then you know that what culture is it there? Okay, just now very good. I think uh, from Fazli just now. Okay, how come you have uh, a culture when it is not there? You know, good strategy when the culture is not there when you're not there. You see, I hope that is clear with everyone. This is so crucial. I am telling you, in most cases, when when the company or when the organizational members tell me they have culture, I said, what do you have in common? Do you share that? And unless you share that, you have that commonality, then you have to work harder to ensure the culture is stronger. Uh, okay? All right? That's why it's not easy. That is why Peter Drucker said, culture is strategy for breakfast. Because if you don't share it, one agree, the other disagree, you cannot implement the strategy. Because why? And then you have people coming along, what's the word they use? Sabotage, especially if you have new strategy. Right or not? Your team members did present just now, right? Because somebody will come and sabotage. So, you know, somebody will come, they resist changes. Why? They don't have the same, uh, the share. They don't, they don't share. Uh, they don't share the, the spirit, the willingness uh, to pursue the strategy. So, before you come up with a strategy, the first thing for an or in future, when you guys are become the boss, the leaders of the company, the organization, when you have you run your own startups, okay, before you go all out of the strategy, uh, nurture the culture. Okay, what culture? That's why that's why my question just now to the team, humans teams, I asked you whether or not the the values and the beliefs and the cultures, you know, that this culture of the founder will influence the company. Uh, largely yes, largely yes. All right. Because, because that is the very thing that drives the founder, all right, in order to start the company, that, that set of principles, values that drove the person. And then, of course, uh, in order to persuade others to, to work together with him or her, uh, he or she would have to now uh, tell them why, why we're doing this. So this is the values, norms, rituals, and the strength. So if they then say, oh yeah, yeah, ho, yeah, ho, agree, ho, agree. See, you share, you share it now, and then you have that culture, and then you can pursue the same goal. Ah, this is very important. So this is really crucial in the entire equation, right? In the entire equation. Now, where does this become a big problem, especially when the company goes so large, so large, and then you pursue probably you pursue different goals. That the more challenging it is when you grow into a huge conglomerate. You have like subsidiaries, we have related, unrelated diversification, you know. So these are then becomes a major. So now who would play a very crucial role in holding everybody together despite the huge diversity, the huge portfolio? The group CEO. And that's why when you have the leader so visible and so powerful. Visibility is another thing. Eh? People like uh, uh, Steve Jobs. People like um, even last time, Jack Ma, all right, uh, Elon Musk. This way it works so well, all right. Even now Grab, you have the Anthony Tan, you know, coming forward and Tan Hui Leong, uh, his partner, and and what else? So so this way this company they come forward, the, the leaders to hold everybody together. If now it becomes bigger, all right. No longer would you be probably behind the scene, and then the leader become the voice and the face of the organization. So, but what comes with it? Also another threat, okay? And then it would be very easy then, you know, for you to, to push the company over. All you have to do is tarnish the leader. Ah, that's why you have now, you have to be very careful. So this is the threat, the risk, you know, uh, don't get into, uh, into the wrong sort of company. You might and uh, you know, unwittingly be involved in something that might give you a scandal, and that's the end of your, you know, the company that you work so hard for. Many people lose their job because of these shady dealings, something that you are not supposed to say yes to, but you said yes to. Uh, you know, somebody that you should not go holiday with, then you went for the holiday with. So please, young yeah, people. So in the future, all right, especially if you are the voice in the face of your company. 
please take good care of yourself and be very careful with all your information. This is all part of the culture because now you are the icon, you are the spokesperson, right? So that is part of the culture as well because you're holding, because your role as the spokesperson and the icon and etc., you are actually holding the, the entire culture of your organization. That's your role, your visibility. So that's why you cannot afford to let yourself down and let the entire organization down. All right, young people, is that clear? How did how the entire thing works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Thank you so much. So I think uh, this is a very uh, nice uh, look at culture that we have today. So we will proceed next to the, the other group. I think that should be, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Naufal's group and then followed by finally Patricia's group. Would you, uh, the two group, would you take over? Ah, okay, now this is politics, good. So this is where politics comes in, Pula. Hmm? Can you hear me, doctor? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from group 10 and we will be talking about the political considerations and strategic analysis and choice. My name is Faris. My group members is Noval, Lutfi, and Farhan. Next. As an introduction, every kind of organizations are political and strategic decisions are usually based on politics of the moment. Sometimes these, these decisions that are made based on politics do not emphasize on the existence of objective values. Internal politics affect the choice of strategies in all organizations. Unless it is managed, political maneuvering consumes time, organizational objectives, diverts human energy, and would result in the loss of some valuable employees. Okay. And in creating a successful strategy, what can be done is by letting weekly supported ideas and proposals guide through connection and to establish additional tests for strongly supported ideas considered unacceptable, but not openly opposed. Next. I think, uh, no, uh, no, Faris, you just know, sorry. Faris, no, uh, Faris, Faris, I think the spelling of weekly is W E K. Ah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Week, yeah, yeah. It's it's weekly, it means one week. Right, okay, now let's tell you, man, yeah? okay. Next, it will be continued by Lutfi. Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Lutfi. I will continue what Farid said. So, to continue, involving, involving politics are create bias on strategy choice and analysis. It is important to minimize political exposure because it may create a successful strategy. Successful, successful strategy are affecting enthusiasm to all employee level that also will make them want to share their idea and on strategy choice for their company. And if all employee level ideas are can be here, it will also trigger internal commitment. By having this, all employee must be put their effort to do their task, and if it's so, it may achieve goals and on a real marketplace. I think that's all. Next slide. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Amanafal, and I will explain about tactic used by politicians that can aid strategies. There are five. Tactics. The first one is equality. Achieving desired result is more important than imposing a particular method. And the second one is satisfying. Achieving satisfactory result, result with a popular strategy is generally better than trying to achieve optimal result with an unpopular strategy. And the third one is generalization. Shift from specific to general issue and concern. And next is focus on higher order issues. Shift from short-term to long-term issues and concern. And the last one is provide political access on important issues. Strategy and pol policy decision with a significant negative consequences for middle manager will motivate in intervention behavior from them. That's all. Assalamualaikum, and hello everyone. Uh, I am Muhammad Farhan, and I'm going to continue Nawfal's presentation. 
So here I'm going to talk about the, the case examples. And as we know, for example, in undertaking political strategies, often my influence legislators to restrict the use of researches by competitors in the hopes of raising the value of its own researches. In this way, the anticipation of greater firm value motivates the firm's decision to take political action in certain situations. Firms may also be motivated to lobby the government as a means of increasing value, in which they are trying to maintain the value rather than quit it as a useful strategic purpose. Where firms have already established a significant value base in the form of distinctive and or inimitable researches or competencies, they may be motivated to protect the value they already possess from loss or competitive erosions. And as we can see, there are two examples, and the first one is from Microsoft. Microsoft acted aggressively to protect its value base against government efforts to erode its extraordinary market advantage in computer software. The next, Harley Davidson successfully lobbied the US government to implement trade protection in the 1980s to protect and maintain the firm's value base built on its dominance in the US motorcycle market. And those are the examples of political consideration, strategic analysis, and choice that happen in the world. And that's all for me. Thank you. Is that the last presentation from your team? Yes, Dr. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very good. Going back to Novel's slide just now, I just want to point that uh, out the, the five steps, uh, tactics. Um, okay. Um, this one just now, very simply, uh, very simple when you uh, deliver that presentation. But this is one of the very hard things to do. And if you can do this, uh, young people, if you understand this and you remember this, uh, it will do you good. Because it is not easy to do this, very hard. For example, equality. If you now stand and you are being treated unequally, you know, when that happens, you will feel angry, right? You feel angry. So when you feel very angry, you, when you feel like I am so, you know, I am uh, mistreated, not treated well, uh, you see, you look at that, achieving desired results. It is so challenging for you to tell yourself, okay, now what's more important is to achieve desired result. Don't get angry, don't get angry. Do, do you get what I mean, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here? Look carefully at this. If you can master this, you will be, you know, it will really do you a good service. Because even I myself also struggling to master this um, sometimes, right? Um, uh, for instance, right? Um, for example, generalization, shift from specific to general issues and concerns. Sometimes you are actually discussing something very specific and then few people probably get together and, you know, because of the hidden political agenda, will try to shift the discussion away. You know, how you would just say like, when, especially when you know the reason that they do that, it's not because of the greater good for the organization, but because of the... Uh, a cunning good for some few individuals who will benefit from it. So then, for you, you, you feel like saying this outright to the face, like, hey, 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 you know, you just what you, um, the tendency, even I myself sometimes caught myself doing that to do that, to be to settle the uh, uh, specific issue would be very high. So it is very, very challenging to force yourself to say, okay, hang on, and take a deep breath, and let's look at the bigger picture of the entire thing. So please be mindful of this, yeah? All right, so um, any questions from um, Young Line, the rest? Nope, if no further questions, very good. Uh, we move to the last group then, Ms. Fisher. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, thank you there. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to Dr. Helen. Uh, do you hear me, my voice? Good afternoon, Patricia. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our group will present the role of a board of directors, governance in strategic planning. Okay, so. A board of directors consists of elected individuals who serve as advisors to a corporation and act as representative for shareholders. Boards are held accountable for the entire performance of an organization. Boards guide the success or failure of a company by steering the overall corporate direction, setting policy, choosing executives, and ensuring that major decisions are ethical and prudent. They make a commitment to building the mission and vision of the company to ensuring it is carried through all areas of the organization. Okay, next. So the role of a board director, therefore, which is a control and oversight over management. Second, adherence to legal prescriptions. Uh, next, consideration of stakeholders' interests. And lastly, advancement of stakeholders' rights. For the control and oversight man, uh, over management, usually uh, it is the board's responsibility to create and review a statement of mission and purpose that articulates the organization goals and means and primary constituent serve, which is uh, firstly select the chief executive officer, CEO. Boards must reach uh, on the chief executive's responsibility and undertake a careful search to find the most qualified individual for the position, sanction the CEO teams, provide the CEO with a forum, ensure manager competency for the, uh, because um, for manager competency are necessary for a productive workforce. Uh, and next, evaluate management's performance at management salary levels, including fringe benefits, which is fringe benefits is uh, like uh, health, uh, employee security, health and health and benefits, and retirement benefits. Guarantee managerial integrity through continuous auditing. Check the corporate course, device and revise policy to be implemented by management. Next, I will pass to Arifa Iliana. Next, adherence to legal prescription. First, keep abreast of new laws, which ensure the entire organization fulfills legal prescription, passed by laws and related resolution, resolution, and select new directors, approve capital budgets, authorize borrowing, new stock issues, bonds, and so on. Next, I'll pass to Emilia. The next point for the board of directors' role and responsibilities is consideration of stakeholders' interest, which is they need to monitor product quality and facilitate upward progression uh, in employee quality of work life. And also, they need to review labor policies and practices, improve the customer climate, keep community relations at the highest level. And also, they need to use influence to better governmental, professional associations, and educational uh, contacts. And also, they need to maintain good public image. For the next point, I will pass to Harina. I hope when you're sharing all this, all of you remember, this is what you do in future, no? all of you, when you become bosses. Right? Don't forget to do all this. Right? Go on, just to remind. <laughs> For the last point, which is advancement of stockholders' rights, mm -hmm. where it preserves stockholders' equity, stimulate corporate growth so that the firm will survive and flourish, let's guard against equity dilution, ensure equitable stockholder represent, representation, inform stockholders through letters, reports, and meetings, declare proper dividends, and lastly, guarantee corporate survival. Okay, that's all from our group. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hold on a second, yeah, I have a call. Hello, Eka. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Doctor. Afternoon, Eka. I have class until five. Can you call me after five? 
Now that sort of like change a bit of the hairstyle. All right. Um, again, uh, this is back to very simple slide. <laughs> what a struggle. Um, I hope you still can hear me. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, can hear okay, you. Okay, great. Okay, right. Uh, this slide looks so simple that you do once again, but it, it really carry heavy, heavy weights. Um, this is what you do when you become leaders, when you become the CEO, CFO, the C-suites especially, All right? Um, and failing to deliver any of this, you can get into the wrong side of the law. What would that be? Negligence. You can be sued by the, stakeholder, uh, by the uh, stockholders. All right, stockholders and stakeholders. Stockholders will be part of the stakeholder, right? Stakeholder will be people who have interest in the organization. So stockholder is one of the stakeholder. So you might want to be, uh, uh, you might want to read this in detail, um, especially um, uh, not to get on the uh, uncomfortable side with your stakeholders, right? Um, that is why when it comes to the advancement of stockholders, right, we keep a good company secretary to do this job. Now, when I say, when I use the word company secretary, usually the boss will stay very close uh, to the company secretary, right? Um, because the company secretary uh, would be uh, also very closely with the board of directors, all right? Now, uh, does anybody understand here what does a company secretary do and who are the company secretaries? So this is like apart from the CEO, because in future, you might need to have a company secretary to help you. Or maybe if you can't engage one, if you can't pay one uh, to be in the company, then make sure you every now and then um, you uh, get the company secretary to take a look at your, you know, all, all of this, uh, taking care of the stock and etc. cetera. Mm. Anybody want to offer? What is the company secretary? Tauta. No, no, no. Want to ask or not? Human administrative job. Hmm. <laughs> You're right. Do you know? When set up, Sunil Brahat must have secretary. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's how important it is. Beyond administrative job, human. More than that, right? Yeah. Usually, a company secretary is a license, um, licensed person. You you must get a license from the Malaysia, um, from the chat, a chartered, a chartered. Usually, the company secretary would be those who are with very strong uh, uh, accountant, right? Chartered accountant can become company secretary. Um, people with legal background, lawyer, but you have to get the lesson from the uh, international, uh, the, the international chartered mm. of uh, ICSA, international chartered S secretary A association. Yeah, so we have Malaysia, Maiksa. So you have to sit for exam, for exam, for this, all right? And if you want to start a company like Hazel said just now, you need the company secretary to sign. And for companies, annual report must be signed and endorsed by company secretary. So this is not your ordinary administrative officer. This person is not, an, not, not your admin person at all. This person is super, uh, uh, usually uh, sitting in the C-suites, all right? Um, uh, right, right. So you need a company secretary to sit for exam. Um, I'm doing this now, uh, the Maiksa, but because of the fact that I was so busy with the at the chancellery, I I could not sit for the paper uh, this year. So it's quite unfortunate. I have I still have three papers left uh, to complete. 
and that is what we I I did the um, corporate uh, uh, corporate admin paper. Uh, well, both of okay, one paper is board of director paper. Uh, corporate finance paper that is financial. And another paper is hmm. corporate governance. I have completed already. Uh, corporate uh, corporate administration. Uh, corporate corporate CS a uh, secretary uh, secretary uh, secretaryship and administration. Nothing to do with uh, writing notes. Secretary actually a lot of law inside there. So I have three more papers to go. I would probably sit for the paper in June. So see, not you not the you are not the only one sitting for exam. I also still have to sit for exam. So. Um, uh, but prior to that, I have completed many modules: corporate taxation, la, corporate governance, la, uh, all sort of like uh, company law and all that. But the best part would be if you have legal background, for example, like my 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 case legal background, I don't have to sit for company law exam, all right? Um, uh, be because I, I did company law in my legal paper. So after three after three papers finished in June, I will tell you if I already have my company uh my company my Ixa thing then. For anybody who want to start the senior Brahad, you can come to me. I see. I, I help you with uh, looking at all that stock thing, uh, call for meeting, uh, memorandum, uh, winding up, all of the reading, the finance, and etc. Um, what else? The uh, 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 related party transaction. So we have to. We also need to check. Uh, let's say if you acquire new company and how you acquire new company whether you acquire the company of your son in order to rescue your, your son from that, you know, something like that, or your relative from that. So that would be, especially if your company is a public company. So that is what we call the related party transaction, RPT. So, um, you know, RPT can get you into trouble. Uh, and then the stakeholder and the stockholder, rather uh, shareholder, the shareholder can vote you out of, uh, let's say, your directorship. Uh, and then uh, we, for example, like company secretary, then we look into that, all right, to prepare. So you better, if your company is uh, yeah, quite huge, you better have a very good company secretary to take care of this legal, this really, this is very technical headache uh, uh, things uh, to look into. But if you have one, good. And then basically, uh, even your company secretary can can defend you uh, in the legal, uh, because some of them are lawyers and also very good in finance, you know, so we, because... Corporate finance in this paper is very tough. It's very tough to, uh, very tough to to pass it. Uh, I look at the example of the corporate finance paper. That oh, I need a holiday in order to study for that. Okay, so that would be our final paper for the day. Um, our final presentation for the day. Let me see. Yeah, we are good with Patricia and the team just now, right? Okay. Now. I would like to talk to you, I think, to, okay, I hope we finish at 4.30, that means another half an hour or so. Um, now, regarding the midterm exam, now midterm exam would be very simple. I'm going to give you one case. Uh, it's very simple that close your eyes so you can do this. Really wish to assist you on this one. Um, we are going to look at the IBM case, and that is in the textbook. Um, now I will give you the explanation first so that it will not be a huge problem for you to settle this. Kejap, kejap, kejap. Kejap, kejap, nak ke mana tu? Stay put, stay put. No matter what you do, don't run away. Another half, less than half an hour. Uh, okay, this. All right, so no matter what, we need to do a midterm exam so that we have marks for midterm exam, right? So, but at the same time, it will make you remember as well. Uh, so this, now this, we are going to do the IBM. Um, why do I want to do the IBM? Because I want you to get used to reading the case uh, for your final exam, all right? Um, later, I will talk about the final exam. Now, what the question is, I'm going to upload the question for you. Um, give me tonight, okay? Uh, the, sim the question is very simple for me to draft, but I want to put it in a proper format. Read this IBM's case. IBM is one of, if not, the best, but one of the best for me personally, one of the best company in the world. And I think this company will stay long. They invented the first computer that, that you know, that beat uh, Gary Kasparov, the grandmaster of chess, the deep blue, all right? And then recently, they also come up with the, um, uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, leading cutting edge AI. 
And if you hear the word smart, uh, smart city, smart campus, smart living, smart, smart, smart here, smart there, smart, the, 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 that word smart of all this first came from IBM. IBM invented that term. All right, smart city, smart. What does it? Uh, what does smart mean? You know, when uh, the the internet provide you the intelligence, you know, the 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 machine. Okay, sorry. Um, then you have something like AI, deep machine. Okay, the power of IoT and etc. So that gives you the smartness, the intelligence. Uh, that that is smart. So they, IBM, first defined that word, come up with that term, smart. You see. So this company, I think. Very good. And when the university, when the companies want to do uh, global jamming, like jamming for ideas, you want to, something like uh, crowdfunding, right? crowdfunding, so you want to source things from the crowd. So crowdfunding, crowdfunding is one of the way to source funds from the crowd. What else can you source from the crowd? What else? Something, something, uh, something valuable, for example, like ideas. So then, Okay, interestingly, uh, some universities and some organizations then try to get to source ideas from the general public. You know, sometimes it's not just a nearby public, but all over the world, ideas before strategic planning. So, you know, this is like getting, it's, uh, we call it the uh, stakeholders' input. In strategic planning, usually we call it stakeholders' input. But this one is not just stakeholders' Their stakeholders is from around the world. So how then do you get ideas from everybody around the world? Ask them to email you. Uh, who will check the email? All right. So uh, get online and engage them. Like oh, so. The, now IBM came up with an idea. So IBM uh, came up with the jamming, jamming session. So what they did was like um you know they would. It depends on on how many, how how long do you want. You can open your. They can create the portal for you. And then you can tell them we want uh, we want people to streamline uh, within 24 hours. You know, jamming. You call it jamming. Ideas jamming. Streamline for 24 hours. You can create your uh, categories or themes of what you want people to give idea. Okay, let's say if you want them to talk about uh, technology uh, here, economy there. You know, so you can provide uh, themes. You can talk to IBM with it. And then you would invite people from all around the world who has ideas on economy. Okay, you say what you, whatever you want to say. Okay, you can provide criteria there. So they call it idea jamming. So jam. Uh, for example, at like University of Southern Australia, UNISA, they have what you call famous uni jam. Uh, when they open the portal, if I'm not mistaken, for 36 hours, for something like that for 24, 36 hours. Okay, the second time they, they did it for like 18 hours. Now all people all around the world streaming and gave ideas how University of South Southern Australia can become a better university. And then because of that, the strategic plan, uh, uh, the, 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 the vice chancellor was pretty young and pretty like, well, let's go for it. You know, um, they came up with, uh, what's the name of, the enterprise, Price. Okay, that's the name of the strategic plan, the Enterprise 2025. You can check in their website. You know, you then you say, ah, oh, but oh, correct. What the hell is that? I'm telling you, that's what they did. Okay, Unijam. And then after 24 hours, then they call, close, they close the portal, and then the IBM system analyze it. My goodness, you know, like really elegant uh, analytic, analyze it according to themes, the frequency, and etc. All sorts of algorithm in there, whatever the client needs. Um, I, 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 I did. Um, I did actually talk about this to UTM with anyone. Then UTM said, "Oh no, we have our own uh, programmer. We have until today. I have not seen any Unijam. But anyway, I <laughs> uh, don't even bother to talk about it. Um, all right. Um, um, so they said they, they have the um Unijam. Hi Holly. I'm I'm online with my class Holly. So you're standing. Yeah, okay, you crawl now behind. <laughs> You're crawling now. Now you know you're guilty, right? Okay, All right. So coming back to you. So uh, there you go. Um, the IBM, right? Um, they did all that, and then they work closely with hotels now. For example, if you read this case, they work closely with hotel. In fact, um, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if they say that they work uh, closely with. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, I am so fast. Um, da -da 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 -da. IBM Studio, oh, Marriott, Marriott. Okay, they work with Marriott. Um, 
to develop the system for merit. Now, just the IBM, you see how many pages? This You will get something like this for your final exam. Like how many page? One, two. But usually what you will find in the case, okay? So now I'm helping you to also with your final exam. You will be, you will get the introduction of the company. And then you will get the history of the company. Just read it. Get to know the company. And then the case would then will talk about the, uh, the value, the vision and mission. Right? Vision and mission. Just read that. And then they talk about the almost the same as the organization of this uh, the, 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 the chapter. They talk about the internal issue, the IFE. So the internal issue, what are they? The company strategy. La. The, just now you showed the chart, the structure, la, the data, and then the financial, finance. You know, all of these are internal matters. And then, sorry, um, after that, they move to competition. Now, competition now begin go to external already. So now when the moment you look the word, the, sorry, the moment you see the word competition, you know we are talking about external factor already. All right. What else do we have? Software, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, and then they move towards uh, they they do they will mention a little bit about strategy and then they go into some concern, legal and ethical big data considerations, so some concern. And then at the end, they will finish it and it with like what next? Okay, future. Then the top they will tell you. Um uh, currently, this is what's gonna happen. So that means 2015, this case was prepared in 2015. Okay, so next. So the question would be ask you, usually it asks you to prepare. Look at the final sentence here. Prepare a needed three-year strategic plan for CEO Virginia Romiti and Big Blue. Virginia Romiti, the lady. Yeah, IBM is led, led, uh, uh, led by a lady, of uh, Virginia Romiti. You can see uh, her picture. She's a bit like, mm -mm, very tough lady, uh, Virginia Romiti, right? And the Big Blue. What is Big Blue? IBM. Okay. That is a nickname of IBM, Big Blue. So if you have a nickname, you can call yourself a big blue. Then we know you are an IBM. All right. Now, but for your midterm exam, you're not going to prepare the strategic plan. For uh, what I'm going to do, using this case, I'm going to draft you a question uh, to list down the organizational culture. All right. To list down the organization. Find at least five uh, organizational culture of the IBM, what makes them successful? So that will be my question. So I think that is really straightforward. There is no way that you cannot do this. All right, my question, even I, I haven't drafted it, but I know what I'm gonna ask you. All right, uh, discuss or describe five of uh, IBM's organizational uh, culture that makes them so good. So from this case, any question on that? Is it manageable if I give you that for your midterm exam? Let me know. Yes, I'll Fine. Mm, fine, right? I, all I need is one person to tell me fine, then I'm okay. All right. I'm so sorry, I'm too hungry in the village. This is why I'm eating what I'm talking to you. So it's really impolite, right? Mm. Now. Sorry, sorry, doctor. Yeah. When the meet them again. I'm going to give it to you tonight and you take a week to complete that, submit it next week. Is that okay? Because I know some of you are facing challenges because of the weather and all that. Is one week okay? Will it help? More like an assignment, yeah? But just to give you, you know, at the end of the day, give me a very critical discussion. Not too long, but not too brief, giving me, you know, bullet point. Don't do that. You, I'm looking at all of you, one day become future leaders, you will go beyond bullet points. Why? Because you should know more than your employees. You should know more than people whom you lead. So, but not too long again, uh, because you know, when you talk too long, it will be long with it, like myself, but try to make it short, right? So, um, uh, so take one week, submit it on next Sunday before our meeting. So that's our midterm settled. Now, uh, we have completed chapter eight, chapter nine and 10. I will address that next week, which is uh, implementation. There's not so much on that one. Uh, I would probably talk about it, uh, uh, nine, 10, 11, nine, 10, three chapters left, nine, 10, and 11. Uh, I should think so. Um, nine, 10, 11. Um, okay, hold on, hold on. I believe that that is the case. Oh, yeah, this is too long to go. 
Tum, tum, isi, tum, 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 tum. Okay. Uh, this is this is quite a few thousand things to do. Hold on, yeah. Hmm. Just hang on, don't get dizzy. I'm, I'm going to do. I'm just want. I just want to need to take a look at the last chapter. All right, the last chapter would be oh great. Um, nine, ten, eleven. So I can complete nine, ten, eleven. Uh, during our last meeting on the thirtieth, right. Right, so next week will be our last three chapters. I will make it compressed and what would be just necessary uh, for you to know. And the rest, actually, it will come by when you are in practice. Right, now, the final exam. The final exam, you would get case like what you have seen just now. Like I said, the introduction of the company, the history, and etc. And at the end of it, you will be asked to, the one that will definitely come to you is either you being asked you will be asked to uh, formulate a new mission and vision, all right? Either that will be part of the question or you're gonna be asked to look into their culture values. I'm not sure about that. But one thing for sure, you will definitely need to prepare the IFE and EFE, whether you like it or not. You would have to come up with a table, you know, like uh, in the textbook, in the David textbook, the, quad, uh, the metrics, where you would provide the weightage and the rating, all right? My advice to you is when you do IFE and EFE, do not go lower than 10 factors for each. If you just select four or five factors, it lists it down, it will affect your marks, all right? So go and look for the internal factor 10 and then weightage rating. And then the external factors, 10 of it, weightage and rating. And then look into the data. Look, provide the one that with data. Okay, what are the figures? If you don't have the figures, and then you can talk uh, figures, the data, the figures would be the quantitative. If you don't have numbers, quantitative is not there. You can go qualitative. Maybe you can say like stronger, higher, lower. Okay, that is the final choice. We have no choice if you don't have, but at least you have that qualitative, all right? Higher level of this, um, okay? But, but, but if I can find the figure in the case, but you did not use the figure, then you might, you know, you might not get full marks for that, all right? So it's very easy, it's all there. And usually you will be given the case one week before the final exam. So you have no reason not to be able to prepare a good IFE and EFE, which will be, for me, I consider that as a home run. You know what is a home run? When you play, you know, uh, baseball and then you hit the ball, like you went into the jungle or into the lake to the sea, like no need to get the ball or you want to get the ball so it takes some time. All you have to do is just walk. You don't have to run. You will get one score. So IFE and EFE is a home run for you to score your final mark. So please prepare your IFE and EFE well. Not less than 10 factors. If you if if I open your script and I see four or five factors only, and you and you know, so while you are, you know, if you if you upload that to me, you know you will get a lower mark for that. Okay, that one I can guarantee you. So if you put in 10, so the only thing for me to look at the quality of it. All right. If you put five, five definitely zero. Because you only put five. Ma. Okay, so please put 10 of it. All right, so that is a home run. All right, what is the thing? In fact, because you're given the case earlier, you can complete it earlier, actually. So I'm not telling you to do this, right? So this is just a tip, <laughs> you know? And then because you are to prepare IFE, EFE, why, why do you have to prepare IFE and EFE? Because you need to prepare strategy, all right? Because your strategy at this level for your degree, your strategy comes from the IFE and EFE. Uh, because at the degree level, uh, that is a standard uh, being taught, but you are actually being taught a little bit extra because we did futures wheel. Now, um, I cannot put the futures wheel in the final exam. Why? Because the other classes are being not being taught the futures wheel. All right. The, the, the space student, the other sections uh, and, and other, uh, other side of campuses, they're not being taught futures wheel. So I think you, you know, you learn something extra. 
So that is not in the five. You wouldn't find it. But future will is actually more powerful in generating strategy compared to swap. But anyway, let's learn. It's okay for you now. You already know. Just use SWOT. Now, when you are being asked to formulate a strategy for certain company, whatever case you're given, after you've done your IFE and EFE, remember the technique. You generate the SO strategy. So use the strength and the opportunity. What strategy are there? One, two, three. And then the WO, the ST, and then the WT strategies, okay? Do not limit yourself. Please exercise your creativity. What they can do, what they should do. In deciding what they can do, what they should do, this is where you think of how will it bring growth? How will it bring visibility? How will it bring sustainability for the company? That's how you decide. Okay? So that would be part one. And that is the compulsory. You cannot choose which question to answer. You have to answer all. Usually three questions there. All right? Either three or four questions. Compulsory. Uh, 60 marks, 60 marks, if I'm not mistaken, 60 marks, yeah? A big, huge chunk, is it? 60 marks from the final. And then you would have part B. Part B will have four essay. I can tell you now, the four essay come from Tech Note. The four essay come from Chapter 8, Chapter 9, Chapter 10, Chapter 11. So next week, you better don't Miss the class, because that will help you with your part B, what I'm going to focus on, right? Chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, right? The four chapters, right? That will be, there will be four questions. You will be given four questions for part B, answer only two. One question will give you 20 marks, 240. So 40 part B plus 60 part A, total 100 marks. And then from the 100 marks, this will give you the 40 marks towards the total final on top of your project, okay? The one that you will uh, you are now working on with your team on top of your midterm, your quizzes, your participation in the class, some of the individual assignments, some of the group, little, little things that you do. We collect all of that become the total 100 marks. So you see, it is not that tough. Uh, to score in A plus or A in strategic management, dengan syarat, uh, with condition, you know the technical, the detailed technical part. I am a very technical person when it comes to technology, uh, sorry, when it comes to strategy. Why? Because it makes sense uh, to be very technical in things. You know, at the end of the day, uh, the company needs numbers, revenues, you know, EPS, earning per share, uh, uh, IB, uh, you know, EB, EB, EBIT, okay, uh, all the earnings. Those are very important for them. So when you talk to the bosses, they want to know numbers. Right? So that's why when you go and do strategic management, you cannot say, I think, stop thinking, show how it's done. That, that's how it is, yeah? So, so um, please uh, take a look at your notes. And I believe that most of you will be able to score um, A. I am very good with giving marks, but of course, at the end of the day, uh, we have to submit your script uh, for audit. So, you know, your attend not only your script, your attendance in your script will be submitted for audit. So if I give you two linear marks, so let's say if most of the thing I ask you to I know, put, you don't put it there, then I cannot give you high marks, you see? So you have to be mindful of that, yeah? Please, when you write, write like a scholar, uh, you know, scholarly person when you answer question, okay? I think with that, uh, very, uh, yeah, 4.23 now. Let's finish uh, a bit earlier. So um, for those who are celebrating uh, this Christmas, 25th of November, I would like to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas with your family. Um, um, have a nice time. Um, don't forget to help your mom and dad cook in the kitchen. Don't simply go around and eat and finish the food only, but do, don't help. Uh, then when you must help. <laughs> And uh, for those who are not celebrating, if you do have friends celebrating Christmas, well, go ahead and visit them. But may be mindful of the water, especially for those who stay in a very, you know, a flood prone areas. And for those who are caught in the flooding areas. So uh, please keep us posted in your WhatsApp, whoever, if any of you need help, uh, right? Um, if you reach to the point that you need to call someone, please do not hesitate to call me. Give me a call, okay? Any of you here in your class? I remember just now one, my Sarah, and the other one is, um, uh, oh dear, um, forgot the name just now. Forgot which one? 
All right, give me a call. Let us know if you need any help. Um, and take good care of yourself. Be safe. Okay. So um, right. Okay. Finally, let's the usual tradition. Okay. Let's see whether we have the culture or not. The shared values of switching your camera on in order for a group photo. See whether we have a culture. Later, we will know who would be not part of the culture, who, who, who does not switch the camera on, now that you understand the definition of culture. Okay. Uh, mana ni culture? Jom, Nurul Adiba, Ain Farhana, Hani. Um, this household now is almost on Christmas mood. But everybody is working hard on the preparation. I'm the only one sitting at the corner, so making so much noise as if I'm talking to the wall. But actually, I'm talking to all of you inside the screen. So how strange can that be? No wonder just now somebody why are you talking uh, talking to the wall as if it's like that. Okay, so I think once again, I think Chris will be um I'm hoping for <laughs> your contribution. I thank you. Yeah, my hair. Hmm. Should I should put on the, the Christmas cap on my head today, huh? Christmas mood. Yeah, anybody who has Christmas cap. Oh, nanti ada apps kalau tak semua uh, topi merah atau topi kepala semua orang. <laughs> oh, you do have. <laughs> no Christmas cap. Huh? Oh, otherwise there is a cap, is it, for everybody? <laughs> All right, in any case, okay, I'm showing off my Theory X t shirt. Oh, the Hadupuna, you're very, very up there. Okay, let me find. Do I have any? Where do you find that thing? Spotlight, virtual. Uh, choose a uh, video filter on the stop video. Stop video, is it? Yep. Okay, and now I'm getting my education. After I close my video, what do I do? Uh, no, you should open. You should click on the this kind of kind of upper area. So, betul tak betul pi lah kot. There's no topi. <laughs> Whoa, power, everybody. Okay, let's go festive, everyone. Nafal, kau jangan tidur, bangun. Bangun, Nafal. <laughs> we need cookies, Nafal. Harnina, where are you? Wow, you are so good, man. Look at all of you. Pirate pun ada. Gosh. <laughs> A pirate who studied strategic management is a powerful one, man. You better watch out for him. <laughs> okay. Let us know. Oh, cute black girl. <laughs> oh, oh, go ahead, Hazel. Go and overdo it. <laughs> Okay. Now, freestyle, freestyle. Thank you. Okay, now, young people, so have a great time over this festive season. Don't overeat. Don't oversleep. Tujuh.